So this is uh, Robin for tech.eu. I'm here in uh, Stockholm, Sweden, and I'm at a company that I've never actually heard about. Uh, it's called Teenage Engineering. And as you can see, they are actually located in a garage here in Stockholm. It's a really garage startup. Uh, but what do you do, Emil? Uh, we make uh, a couple of products, which we have here on the table right in front of us. Uh, it's, uh, what you can see here is four different products. Uh, I'm not sure where you are with the camera. We have everything from... Uh, yeah, I'm showing all of them now, but the, this for example, what is this? This is the Auto Remote, which is a Bluetooth uh, remote, uh, which lets you uh, control uh, this little cloud speaker. It's a cloud uh, speaker. This speaker is not out yet, it's called the Old 11. Right. When uh, is it shipping? Uh, it's gonna ship this summer. We don't have a specific date, but right. this summer. <laughs> so what, what kind of pricing are we looking at for the speaker? It's eight ninety nine dollars. And the remote? It's uh, ninety nine dollars. Ninety nine. Okay. But the main product that you um, are known for and that you uh, sell the most of is uh, this one. It's a synthesizer. Yes, it's the OP one. It's a OP1. portable synthesizer and a mini controller which uh, has a built-in uh, accelerometer, built-in uh, hard drive, of course. Uh, it has a built-in OLED screen, microphone. It also has a FM radio for live sampling. Uh, it has a very nice uh, screen with, um, with everything you see on the screen is color-coded to those four knobs. So everything you like turn on right. gets... Uh, let's see what they have here. See that everything. If you if you touch green, you you move the green and stuff like this. So it's very uh, it's very easy to use. Right. Even but if you're not a musician. But is this for mostly for professional artists and producers? I would say it's everything from like my daughter, which is five, until uh, like my father, which is sixty. Right. And, uh, I, I would say everything between. Right. I personally I, I was playing the guitar from the beginning and I, I fell in love with the, with the synth like the synth world not only the open one but just because of the open one to be honest because it's it made me realize that it's not that hard to make electronic music right and I think uh, I think that's something what, which that's quite unique for the open one if you compare with other synthesizers right um, so how many of these uh, synthesizers are you shipping on a monthly basis just a rough estimate. Uh, enough to, to keep us uh, rocking. But, uh, and how many people are you? I think we're around 25 now. 25, so yeah. you're sustaining a company with uh, the synthesizers. It's nice. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you have some reference customers, for, which I think you should uh, brag about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had uh, we have some early adopters, like uh, beta testers, like uh, Dick, and we had. Quite recently, Depeche Mode made a, uh, one of their new songs in their album on the open one. Uh, there's one Usher song uh, called, uh, I think it's called Scream, that's made with the uh, open one. We have um, uh, so many artists that I have. <laughs> Well, that's good references. Um, I, can, I can come up with some more, but yeah. So what struck me uh, during our conversation is that uh, this model, the OP1, has actually been around for Since a few years now, right? Since 2011. I think it's three years. January three years. 2011. Yeah. So the plan isn't to release like a new uh, model every year or every few months, uh, like some you know hardware companies tend to do. Um, no, I would say I would say we will. The OP1 will live as long as this company lives. I'm pretty sure we we focus a lot on like maintaining really good OS updates, so it feels really fresh and new to even the first customers and ourselves, of course. Uh, and uh, but yeah, we need to we, we also need to make new hardware. So th th there's gonna be it's new stuff also. It's the same with the speaker that we try to build like a platform, a hardware platform, and then we we continuously update the, the software and add functions. So basically we could build a synthesizer inside the speaker as well. So we can add, you know, a lot of like fun stuff, uh, but we don't have to change the hardware all, you know, every. Right. So it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit how we work and we try to find like, a, we start with the hardware with a really simple and, you know, like timeless design. And then we try to add all this fun stuff over the years, you know, and, right. and start to, 
So the, the product when it, it's launched is kind of like have the basic functions and then we you know add more and more and more. So I think that can be uh, which is uh, I think it? we should say that about this as well because this is the Bluetooth uh, the remote for the speaker. It's a it's a volume knob. But the cool thing is that in the future it will all also be uh, able to talk to uh, a synthesizer or a computer or, or your phone. So it's a little bit like a world with a lot of hardware things that by software can start, you know, to collaborate and right. it's quite interesting. Very cool. Teenage engineering. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you.